With the first pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Yo, what's going on, FG fam? Welcome to a brand new series here on the channel today as we start a next-gen Madden 21 rebuild franchise. Now, this one will not be as in-depth as the Rams as I will not be doing 32-team control, but it will be similar to the Washington franchise that I did in Madden 20. It'll be a little bit more fast-paced. We'll probably do two games an episode, maybe even more if I decide to do play the moments at some point. We are going to start from the regular season. Zach Taylor is being fired mid-season, and the legend Donovan Stallings takes over. Donovan Stallings, of course, from the Washington series. If you guys want to check that out, there will be a link to the playlist at the end of this video. Make sure you guys check that out when you're all said and done here. But Joe Burrow is, of course, the guy we're going to be building around in this series. Part of the reason why I wanted to choose this team, another reason is because they're in the AFC and we're already doing the Rams, and then I did Washington last year. A lot of NFC going on, so I wanted to take a team from the other side of the coin. Obviously, Joe Mixon just got a nice big contract extension. Tyler Boyd got one of those last year. So we have a couple of building blocks on this offense. Tyler Boyd, very, very talented wide receiver. He will make any catch we need him to. Joe Burrow can get him the ball. There are questions outside of that, though, honestly. Joe Mixon, obviously going to be our big-time running back, but we will lose Giovanni Bar Bernard most likely at the end of the year. Joe Burrow, of course, is out for the rest of this season with a complete ACL tear, so he is gone as well. Bernard, I'm probably not going to keep him around much after this year. Joe Mixon is, of course, one of the focal points of the offense, however, and we're not going to need any big time running back for a long time, but we will need a complimentary type of running back and a just in case type of running back in case he gets hurt. Gio Bernard, of course, is that complimentary back right now, but we will find someone else to replace him. He's not really my kind of guy. Tyler Boyd is, of course, our big time receiver here right now as we have already gone over, but there are going to be other guys that we are going to need to bring in. T. Higgins, I quite like as his number two slash number three right now. A.J. Green only has the rest of this year remaining, and we're likely not going to bring him back because he's probably going to hit some big regression, so we're probably not going to want to bring him back. But T. Higgins... I really like what he brings to the table. He's a little bit slow for me. He more or less fits into what I would want as a slot type of receiver. Auden Tate, I quite like, but we likely won't have him for too much longer. John Ross is out for the rest of this season. He is, of course, the speedster, the combine wrecker with his big-time record-breaking performance at the combine. CJ Uzoma, I believe, is quite a bit overpaid for what he brings to the table, so we may need to look for a tight end as well. But the big problems reside on the offensive line. Jonah Williams is a workable guy. Unfortunately, he doesn't have huge strength, but we can work with him, maybe have to move him inside eventually if we get better linemen, but right now, we don't have anybody better, as most of these offensive linemen have not worked out. Hopkins has been awful, Billy Price has been bad, and, of course, the turnstile that is Bobby Hart has been awful for this team, and we're just kind of waiting for them to somehow get off the team. Now, Sam Hubbard, I like him, but he could be trade bait at the end of the season. We will look to extend Carl Lawson, as I'd like to keep him here for a long-term deal. DJ Reader was paid pretty handsomely this offseason, this past offseason by the Bengals. Geno Atkins is a guy that, again, we need his contract to expire because, albeit he's been a pretty much a great player for the Bengals for the last eight years or so, it is time for him to start dwindling, and that's going to be a problem for us in game here. Wilson and Pratt, I like those two guys. I like Davis Gaither as well. Akeem Davis Gaither will have a spot on this team somewhere, a guy from App State. I like to support that. 
It, he has very good speed and acceleration he can pursue, but the thing is, we need somebody who's going to cover somebody at linebacker. William Jackson, his contract's going to be running out at the end of the year, and I don't know if we can keep him. Same thing with Mackenzie Alexander. I don't know if we'll be able to bring him back. So corner is going to be a huge issue this offseason. Jesse Bates, of course, the superstar in the defensive backfield at 23 years old, 90 zone coverage. Just an absolute monster back there. He also has 81 man coverage, and he's not slow either at 89 speed. He can probably play corner, to be honest with you, but then we'd have to find a safety. So there is some flexibility. We can probably do some things in this defensive backfield. Von Bell will be here for a little bit longer. You got to wonder how much he will regress. Hopefully not a lot. Hopefully he'll improve instead. We'll see. He's got a couple of years before he hits 30. Austin Seibert, the kicker, he's young. Huber, the punter, we're probably not bring, We're definitely not bringing back. Let me not say probably. We're definitely not bringing him back. But you can tell the Bengals have been hit hard by injuries this year. A lot of guys on that injury report. Auden Tate, Sam Hubbard, these are all guys that maybe we want to build around. But let's take a look at the rest of the season as we start off against the Dallas Cowboys. That is the game coming up in real life this weekend. You can see Joe Mixon taking this one to the house. And Mixon with a touchdown here. All of these games were played in a... Um, geez, what the hell do I want to say? All of these were played in a play-the-moment setting as a touchdown there to Amari Cooper, and Dallas gets even at seven. Later on, it's a 14-7 game. Bengals looking to score again. Finley up the middle to Drew Sample for the touchdown. And his first career touchdown catch makes it a 21-7 game. Later on, it's 21-14. The former Bengal, Andy Dalton, with the toss to Zeke. And Zeke looking to get in the end zone, and he falls forward into the end zone here in the rain. And Zeke Elliott for the touchdown, 21 all in this one. 139 to go in the game. Here's Joe Mixon, nice little stutter step, and he will get into the end zone as Demarcus Lawrence tries to bring him down. That ends up 28-21. A Bengal lead with 135 to go. Look at that. You'd love to see this. And next gen, you can get into the crowd. Isn't that amazing, guys? So Joe Mixon scores there, and it's fourth and ten for Dallas. Their last opportunity, the former Bengal Andy Dalton looking to fire one up. He throws it to the right side, and it's off the hands of C.D. Lamb. That is going to end it. Ryan Finley, 21 of 27 for 254. Two touchdowns in the game. Andy Dalton, 20 of 32 for 260 and two touchdowns. Zeke ran for 124 and a touchdown, but he was outdone by Joe Mixon's 165. And two touchdowns. Mixon also caught for 82 and a touchdown. So a huge game for Joe Mixon in total yardage. Just an absolute domination of that Dallas defense by our star running backs. And now against Pittsburgh. We're already up 3-0, but there's James Conner diving into the end zone. Or falling, or sliding, however you want to call it. But he gets himself in there, and it is seven to three. Bengals threatening here, first and goal from the two. Finley on the slant route, and he finds AJ Green for possibly one of his last touchdowns as a Bengal. First and ten for Pittsburgh later on in a thirteen to ten game. Roethlisberger up the middle, and he hits Eric Ebum. I mean Ebron for the touchdown to give the Steelers the lead again. It's 17-13. Steelers looking to score again with 5.09 on the clock. Here goes James Conner, and Conner running through an attempted tackle by Jesse Bates. That's a touchdown for him, his second of the day, making it 24-13 in this one. Bengals looking to play for a little respect here. Finley to the end zone, and that's intercepted. And that is going to do it as Terrell Edmonds with that interception with just 20 seconds left. Ben Roethlisberger, 19 of 34 for 202 and a touchdown. Finley, 21 of 38 for 274, a touchdown and an interception in this one. But Finley has not played very poorly in these games and kind of quite impressed with what he has done as what he is expected to do, put it that way, compared to what he's expected to do. James Conner with a 98-yard game and two touchdowns. 
94 yards from Tyler Boyd, 82 and a touchdown from Eric Ebron, and 71 and a touchdown from A.J. Green. Love to see A.J. Green doing some things. Three sacks from Cam Hayward, two from T.J. Watt. We just got sacked way too many times in this game. So now we move into the Houston Texans. Here's Deshaun Watson, and that one is tipped away. So on fourth down, Donovan Stallings' defense comes up with a big stop. Now Ryan Finley throwing, and that's intercepted. And that one is Eric Murray coming back to the six-yard line. So again, the Texans with another opportunity to score. Third and goal. Right side throw, it's David Johnson, the brand new Texan. He came over in the trade with DeAndre Hopkins going to the Cardinals. I'm sorry, I can never say that with a straight face. So now first and 10, here's Ryan Finley. And here's the run for Joe Mixon. Mixon up the middle, pushing the pile and falling over it for a touchdown. Joe Mixon with a tremendous touchdown run and ties it at seven. So now Houston with another opportunity. Two minutes to go in the first half. It's Deshaun Watson looking across the middle, and he gets David Johnson again. Mackenzie Alexander in coverage there just could not lock up David Johnson, and that makes it 14-7 in favor of the Texans. Here's Finley coming back the other way. Finley going to roll to his right, and he is going to take off. Wide open for the touchdown. Showing off a little legs is Ryan Finley. And he is now taunting the Houston Texan fan base. Now a field goal attempt for Cyber. That is wide left as it was a tie ball game. And then Deshaun Watson to David Johnson again and again. Mackenzie Alexander hard in coverage against a guy like David Johnson. That's his third receiving touchdown of the game. So the Bengals down seven here, but an opportunity with just over a minute and a beautiful throw to A.J. Green for the touchdown. Another TD for A.J. Green that's won in the last two games. And it ties it at 24. Now with just 35 seconds to go in regulation, Tyler Boyd with a brilliant catch at the 35. Then a run here from Joe Mixon will get them to the 26. And an opportunity possibly for a game-winning field goal, but a timeout taken by Houston. So Cyber going to have to think about it. 24 all, an opportunity to win the game here from 41 yards out. Cyber, this one's looking left, and it bongs off the post. Bonging off the left upright. And now in overtime, the Bengals with another opportunity, however, and it is A.J. Green with his second touchdown of the day, third in his last two games to give the Bengals the victory. 25 of 41 for 298, three touchdowns and a pick for Deshaun Watson. Mixon goes for 134 and a touchdown. Tyler Boyd for 89 yards, but A.J. Green with 62 yards and two touchdowns for him. On defense, two sacks for Carl Lawson, definitely making a case to re-sign him for some money. And Trey Waynes with an interception, I'd love to see that. Here's Justin Tucker, and they're going to go with a fake field goal here against the Ravens. It's RG3 taken off, and he is brought down at 46. Another fourth down stop here in this video for the Cincinnati Bengals defense. So now third and two, here's Finley. Clear blitz, but he gets it away to T. Higgins. And he's brought down at the five-yard line. So now Finley and company setting up shop, first and goal. Here's Finley on the slant, and it's Drew Sample this time. He will get in for another touchdown, his first of the day, his second of the year. Makes it 7-0 Bengals. So now with 15 seconds to go in the half, it's 10-7 Bengals. Here's Lamar Jackson, a little screen play. And this one is into the end zone for the touchdown. Receiving touchdown for Mark Ingram makes it 14 to 10 in favor of Baltimore. We have the third quarter now. Finley with an opportunity, maybe to score some points here. Here's the throw into the end zone. It's AJ Green again. AJ Green piling on the scores. You love to see that he's not injured and you love to see him playing well in what is probably his last season here with us. Here's Finley going down with the sack. It's Matthew Judon. 21-17 game in favor of Baltimore. Bengals going to get on their horse and score here. Here's the throw to the end zone, and Tyler Boyd comes down with it for the touchdown. 
750 receiving yards for Tyler Boyd on this season. And that makes it 24-21 Bengals. So Ravens here with 234 to go. That's a nice slant. And that one is going to go down the right sideline. It's Willie Sneed with a nice play. 277 and a touchdown for Lamar. Here's Justin Tucker to tie this thing up with 116 to go. He does it. And then in overtime, it's the Baltimore Ravens with the ball first. That one hits the upright, that throw. Justin Tucker on to kick the field goal, and the 27-yarder is good. But time for the Bengals to win this thing if they can. This one's thrown and intercepted. Ryan Finley is picked off by Marcus Peters, and that is going to do it as the Ravens come away victorious in overtime in this one. So Lamar Jackson, 23 of 33 for 327 and a touchdown. Finley, 27 of 37, 332, three touchdowns, two interceptions, though. Joe Mixon only ran for 62 this time. Ingram for 70. Willie Sneed caught for 169. Nice. Touchdowns by a bunch of guys receiving. There's two sacks for Calais Campbell. Keem Davis Gaither got in there with a sack, so you'll love to see the young guys doing some things. Patrick Queen and Marcus Peters came away with the interceptions. So at the end of the regular season, Steelers at 14-2 win the division. Browns and Ravens make the playoffs. Titans win the AFC South at 10-6. Bills win the East at 12-4. You can see my Miami Dolphins lost all four games. In this video, the Jets do succeed at going 0-16. So there, Madden predicts it. 13-3 Chiefs and the 11-5 Raiders. The 11-5 Packers and the 8-8 eight eight Vikings will both be in the playoffs. Saints at 13-3. Bucks at 9-7. The football team wins the NFC East at 7-9 by a game over both the Cowboys and Giants. Cowboys ran off three wins in a row. Giants ran off three losses in a row. Seahawks and Rams both finish 11-5 according to Madden here. And they will both make the playoffs. Cardinals don't win a game the rest of the year, according to Madden. So you see Joe Burrow has no stats. That's because I don't do online cloud franchises. So I did this all offline and forced all the wins to make sure that they were correct. Joe Mixon, 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. A very good season for Joe Mixon. Tyler Boyd led our receiving core with 774 and three touchdowns. A.J. Green ended up with five touchdowns. He had four of them in the last like three games of the year. And on the offensive line, Jonah Williams, Bobby Hart, not good seasons from them. They're going to need to do better. Over on defense, Logan Wilson with 125 tackles, five sacks for Carl Lawson, four for Davis Gaither, a couple for Christian Covington. There were five picks on our entire defense this year, and that's a little disheartening. One force fumble and one recovery all season long. It was Von Bell. Kicking, Austin Seibert was 10 out of 13, and I, I missed two of them myself, my bad. Kevin Huber, not terrible punting. Aaron Rodgers is your league MVP for the Green Bay Packers. Josh Allen was in that race with Ryan Tannehill, Pat Mahomes, Matt Ryan, Baker Mayfield, Phillip Rivers, guys like that. Mike Tomlin wins coach of the year. Josh Allen is your AFC offensive player of the year for the Buffalo Bills. Miles Garrett, defensive player of the year. Tua wins rookie of the year. Logan Wilson wins defensive rookie of the year. That's good. He's on our team. We'll take that. Adam Humphreys, Mitchell Schwartz coming away with awards. Miles Garrett, TJ Watts. Tredavious White and Jason Sanders, all winning positional awards as well. In the NFC, Aaron Rodgers for offensive player, Fred Warner for defensive player, DeAndre Swift, offensive rookie, Xavier McKinney for defensive rookie, Aaron Rodgers, Dalvin Cook, Alan Lazard, winning best wide receivers, Ron Armstead, Aaron Donald, Fred Warner, Janoris Jenkins, Matt Prater, all coming away with positional awards. So we get into the postseason. It is Browns at Chiefs, Ravens at Bills, Raiders at Titans in the AFC. In the NFC, it's Vikings, Packers. Nice divisional matchup. Bucks, Seahawks, and Rams, Washington. We'll see who takes home those victories. There you go. It is the Browns 23 to 16 over the Chiefs in an upset. The Ravens 28 24 over the Bills in an upset, and the Titans winning as a favorite 28 17. Packers killing the visiting Vikings 49 to 10. Bucks 14 to 6 on the road over the Seahawks and the Rams take care of Washington on the road 16-14. I don't know that we'd call that an upset though, but they did have a little bit of trouble with them as I didn't really expect. So, into the 
uh, divisional round. You can see there in overtime, it is the Browns over the Steelers in a divisional bout, and the Ravens take down the Titans. That one was not in overtime, but 35-32 as the Ravens took a 28-17 lead into the half. Titans tried to make a comeback, just couldn't do it. So the two lowest seeds in the AFC, then you got the two highest in the NFC as the Saints take care of the Bucks. The Packers take care of the Rams. Browns 42 to 20 on the road in Baltimore, and the Packers 33 23 on the road in New Orleans. So the Saints get screwed out of a Super Bowl appearance again. As the Packers get the win there, it is Aaron Rodgers against Baker Mayfield. So you won't see any players from those teams in the uh, Pro Bowl here. But as we take a look, see if there's any bangles in the Pro Bowl. I'm not sure that there actually will be. There probably will not be, to be completely frank with you. Uh, none on the offensive line. I wouldn't expect any to be on the offensive line. If there was, it'd be complete BS for sure, as it doesn't look like there's any defensive players either, not even our Rookie of the Year getting in there. Xavier Howard deserves it, and he would have to make the Pro Bowl in order for the Dolphins to really do any any good, as according to this game, really, to be honest with you. But he is a big part of the team this year, and yeah, there you go. That's all the Pro Bowlers. We're looking at retirements now. Mercedes Lewis takes his ring and goes. Ryan Khalil, Calais Campbell, Tremont Williams, Andrew Whitworth, A.Q. Shipley, Donkey Kong Sue, Ben Roethlisberger is gone, Donald Penn, Josh Norman, Richie Incognito, Good Riddance, Sam Young, Darren Fells, Julian Edelman, Adrian Peterson, the legend, Dustin Colquick, Deshaun Jackson, Jason Peters, Sean Lee, Philip Rivers, Jonathan Joseph, Larry Fitz is gone. That's sad. Ted Ginn is gone, Drew Stanton, Clay Matthews, Brandon Carr, Terrell Suggs, and Andy Reid is done. And as I alluded to, the Packers win the Super Bowl 49-35 in a huge shootout. Aaron Rodgers with five touchdown passes. Baker Mayfield, four touchdowns, but he did throw an interception. Aaron Jones with the better running game. He was helped by Jamal Williams as well. Devontae Adams, Jarvis Landry, and Austin Hooper all over 100 yards in the game. What a game it was. Three sacks for Preston Smith. One for Kenny Clark, Rayshon Gary. Miles Garrett did get his. Jair Alexander got a pick in the game. A forced fumble by Sheldon Richardson. Wasn't recovered by anybody, but there you have it. The 2020 playoffs, as predicted by Madden. Of course, they love the Browns. But I could see the Packers possibly winning the Super Bowl. It would take very good games from Aaron Rodgers, but he is capable of doing it. You can see we've got a lot of players we need to resign. Full off season will be episode number two. I hope you guys like kind of the quicker pace format of these videos. I want to get through a bunch of seasons, and the only way to really do that is to move quicker than ramps. So make sure you guys drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and love franchise content. You will love everything that is here. I promise we can build a winner together. And if you want to see some other franchises and you're new, make sure you click here at the end of this video here in this ending screen to see some more franchise.